Good day, this is James at my PE exam. Thanks for joining me. We're going to do a session today all about impulse. And I think impulse sort of kind of doesn't really explain sort of describe what it is really so I've put this definition in here or I don't know if it's a definition but it kind of a, a lead-in statement impulse is relevant when two objects collide so it's kind of like when we have some kind of impact when we have some kind of impact we have an impulse okay we have an impulse when two or more uh, objects surfaces collide with one another so of course that could be when a tennis player, for example, strikes the tennis ball, it could also be when the tennis player pushes off the ground. We have two surfaces, right? We have the, the grass, the earth, and we have the shoe. And they are colliding with one another and force is being applied. So we have collisions in all kinds of scenarios within sport. And I want you to think about that impulse is kind of a product of two phenomena. The first is the size of the force acting. So the size of force acting and this relates very closely to Newton's second law and what we'd say of course is that if Justine Ennan, this is the tennis player we've got here, if she strikes this ball, let me choose a different colour, if she strikes this ball with more force, you know with more force, then of course that ball is going to accelerate more, it's going to have a greater outgoing velocity. So that kind of should make intuitive sense to you I hope. But there's another factor to consider and that other factor is the time that the force is applied for. So let's write that in. The time that the force, the force is applied for, is applied for. All right. So that might not be the most obvious kind of consideration to make. But what we're saying here is that if Ennen, if Justine Ennen strikes this tennis ball here and then follows her racket through in this arc, ultimately her racket will be in touch with that ball's surface there for a longer period of time. So in other words, this time the force is applied will go up. Now, if we increase the size of the force, and or we increase the time that that force is applied to the object, then that will increase impulse. Impulse will go up. So as a result of that, we can therefore define impulse. So we can say, well, if impulse is a product of force and time, impulse is, impulse is force, force times time, force times time. And an even better way to kind of show that is to say that impulse equals impulse equals and we'll try and stick with the same colors here, FT. So impulse equals FT.